Fellow content creators out there, let me ask you guys a question. How many of you guys love making thumbnails for YouTube? Let's face it, no matter where you stand on thumbnails, you can't argue the fact that it's the most important part of any YouTube video because it's the first thing that everybody sees and is what draws them to watch your video. Now, if you've been watching this channel for a while, you might have noticed a dramatic change in the thumbnails right about here. Let's go over what I started doing and how you can implement them into your next thumbnail design. Let's get into it. Hey, what's up guys? Max here and welcome back to another video. Before we get started with this video, I just wanted to state that this video is completely original content. Ah, get that crap out of here. All right, anyways, I've been trying to make my thumbnails better for a while now, and over the past few videos, I've been able to push it over the edge, and honestly, I'm really happy with the direction they're going. So the piece of software you're gonna need for this video is we're gonna need Affinity Photo, and you can actually use that in tandem with Affinity Designer to add some images or some different things because both of them have features that the other doesn't. What I am gonna do is I'm gonna do a free software version of this down the road, but right now I just wanted to focus on the Affinity stuff because that's the software I've been really using a lot lately. Truthfully, if you don't have it, I would advise buying Affinity Photo and Affinity Designer because they are well worth the money and they're only a one-time payment. All right, with all that being said, let's go ahead and start improving your YouTube thumbnails. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is really simple and it's something that I do for every thumbnail now because I never know what exactly I'm gonna do and that's gonna be cropping myself out. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna open Affinity Photo and you're gonna create a new artboard that's gonna be 1280 by 720 and you're gonna do a DPI of 300. So the next thing is I assume you're gonna wanna use a photo of yourself, so go ahead and open the photo you wanna use in Affinity Photo photo. If the photo opens in a new tab, go ahead and copy and paste it to your new artboard and then resize it to your liking. After you resize the image to your liking, you're going to go ahead and copy and paste the image and you should have two identical images on the right side of the screen. Go ahead and select the top image and you're going to go over to the left side and select the brush tool option. What this brush tool allows us to do is to select the part of the image that we want to keep and then remove the part of the image that we don't want to keep. In this particular case, we're obviously going to select our subject, which is ourselves. Once you select this brush tool, it should be defaulted to add, but just in case it's not, go up and make sure it's clicked up in the left corner. It should be grayed out. So let's go ahead and start clicking the image of the part we want to keep and you should start noticing a dotted line going around you and one thing to keep in mind is you can increase the width of the circle so that way you can select more of an area at a time by pressing the bracket keys on your keyboard now if you happen to make a mistake and add too much you can quickly go up to the top left and press the subtract button and you can start subtracting parts of the background that you want to continue to crop out just keep rinsing and repeating the same process of adding and subtracting eventually until you get this image of yourself cropped out as you see on screen right now all right so once we're done selecting everything that we want to crop out of the image you're going to go back over to the right side of the screen and ensure that your image on the top is still selected. Then we're gonna go down or wherever you see these icons right here that I'm highlighting on the screen, you're gonna go over there and you're gonna press the mask button. What that's gonna do is just crop out the rest of the background for that particular picture. Now what you can do is you can go over to the right side of the screen again and on that bottom background, you can uncheck it just to ensure that the mask happened and you should see your image go away and then you'll only have a picture of yourself there. So the last thing we need to do is we need to resize this image to just us. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go over to that image on the right side, the uppermost image that has the mask and you're gonna right click it and you're gonna press raster size and trim. The reason why I do this for every single thumbnail now is because I never know exactly what I wanna do for the thumbnail as I'm going and I wanna have flexibility to be able to add an image behind me or text or anything like that. It's a really handy trick and I suggest you guys do this for every thumbnail because you never know what you're gonna need. If you wanna take this a step further, you can actually add a drop shadow to your image to give you a little bit of depth. You can also add an effect like an outline or some sort of glow effect as well. It's really your choice from this point, but just be aware that you don't wanna add too much effects because it can really make your image look really busy. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about adding a soft light to your background to give you a little bit more of a pop. Now I understand that most of you may not have a lit up background like I do, but even if you do, adding this soft light effect will not only make your image pop a little bit more, but give you that color if you don't have it. So we're gonna take the same masked image that we just made and we're gonna just draw a square over it. So you can go over to the left side of the screen and there's a square tool and you can just draw over it. it doesn't matter what the size is. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add our gradient color and how you're gonna do that is you're gonna select the square image, you're gonna press the G button and you're gonna draw a gradient line either from the left corner to the right corner, the left side to the right side, it doesn't really matter. Just whichever direction you feel like works best for you. We're not gonna add color yet, but what you're gonna do is you're gonna take that square and you're gonna drag it between both of your images. All right, so now that you've done that, you should have an image of yourself over this blank square and what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to that same right side and there should be a drop down box that says normal 
And what you're gonna do is you're gonna click that box and you're gonna go down to whatever lighting option you want. For this example, we're gonna use soft light. So what this has done is made our image transparent, so you should be able to see your other background through this. Now we're gonna start adding our color. So you're gonna go back to that same option. We're gonna select our square and we're gonna press the G button again. In this case, for me, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick this lighter blue color that I currently have in my image on the left side. So I'm gonna make that left point my lighter blue color. And then I'm gonna go up to my right point on the top right and I'm gonna make that more of a purple color which is what I have right now in my background. So now that we got our color selected, let's go ahead and tone this down because it's pretty aggressive. So let's go ahead and go over to the right side of the screen where the opacity bar is. I'm gonna set this bar to about 50% for me because it seems to work on that background best, but just choose whatever option works best for you based on your lighting situation. So now you can see a pretty dramatic difference between the soft background that we have now versus the original background that we had before. Just keep in mind the idea of this is to make you pop out of the background a little bit more and also give your background a little bit more color. All right, so now that we got our effects done, let's go ahead and talk about some ways we can add dynamic text to make our thumbnail pop a little bit more. You have a couple options here, but this one I'm gonna show you right now is super simple and super useful. Now, one of the most frustrating things about thumbnails is trying to figure out how you're gonna get your text to work because you don't want your text over you and you don't want it like too small. So you're frustrated trying to figure out how the heck am I gonna get this text to fit onto the thumbnail and be the right size. Well, what if I told you that we could make the image pass through you just like this? Let me show you how we can make this happen. So go ahead into the text options and select the size of text you want, the style of text you want, and the color and all those things. Once you have that done, go ahead and place the text over the masked image for example purposes. So one thing I suggest you go ahead and do before you go any further is I suggest that you go into the effects settings on the bottom right and you go ahead and select the outline option and add a gray outline. It's usually about 20 or so, you'll see it on screen right now. The reason why that's important is because we're gonna go ahead and make a copied version of this text just like we did with our image. So on the right side of the screen, you should see two identical texts. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your bottom most text and slide it underneath your masked image just like this. Now finally, what we're gonna do is we're gonna select the top most text and we're gonna go up to the top right corner to the fill options and we're gonna press the little arrow, back and forth arrow to knock out the fill. Now you should be seeing an effect just like this. Now keep in mind that these are two different texts so they're gonna be mirrored over each other. So if you need to move them, you have to make sure to go over and select both texts to move them around to wherever you'd like. Now from here, just like the image, you can go ahead and start adding drop shadows, adjusting the outline, whatever you feel like would spice your image up, just go ahead and start adding some effects. All right, so there you go. Now you won't have to have that issue of trying to figure out what you're gonna do with your text anymore. Alrighty guys, this is the finished product. Leave a comment down below if you want to see more tutorials around thumbnails. I have plenty more tips and tricks I can show you guys if you guys are interested. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I'm going to be making another version of this, but using free software as soon as I can figure out exactly what I want to do for that. If you guys would like to ask me questions live, I do stream on Twitch. You can find my information down in the description below, as well as my schedules and everything like that on my Twitter page and on my Discord server. But anyways, guys, that's it. Thank you so much. And as always, we'll see you next time. My my cat was <laughs> oh, God. Ah. <laughs> <laughs>